Yes, the LA Fair went pop this year, and as such, it placed quite the emphasis on pop art. And, in fact, art in general. For instance, one of the fairground's permanent structures is the Millard Sheets Art Center, which was showcasing an exhibit called Shifting Aesthetics, featuring a variety of pieces by a variety of Los Angeles artists working in a variety of mediums. The painter stood before her We got to learn a little bit about some of the artists and some of the pieces from the statements on the walls, but by and large it was a self-guided experience where the art stood for itself. No, I thought I must have some complex. <laughs> 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 Not just <laughs> Kusama means Route 66 road. Yeah, no, there's like separate pieces that are similar, not only in look at these, but the color scheme is like identical. We're swimming through. Swimming through. Down on the hill was the Atrium and Flower and Garden Pavilion, where there was an exhibit called Pops of Color, which featured flower art from floral artists and also real pieces from floats from the Pasadena Rose Parade. The bulk of the arts and crafts competition was at the DIY Design Studio inside of the Grandstand Building. There were some arts and crafts demonstrations you could witness. Now when they say homebrew demonstrations, do they mean like a homebrew that I do every Tuesday night? If you're making beer, then probably. As always, we didn't stick around to the scheduled time to see any of them. And thousands of entries and dozens of different types of design contests were on display. Many of the pieces had a pop culture theme, in keeping with the pop theme of the fair as a whole. There was photography. There was sculpture. There was painting. This needs to be a black light or something. It really does, yeah. There was quilting. Well, that's one way you attribute about it. You just felt it onto a... Uh, <laughs> cloth. <laughs> Visual friends, not food. I like how the, the sea turtle is just going, ah! Yeah, that new Jurassic Park short, Battle of Big Quilt. <laughs> okay, we make up for the Grinch erasure on that other quilt. There were wagons. A Beatles wagon. All you need is drugs. Do, do, do. I feel like that the front section is the submarine. That is nice. That is cool. There were food items. We couldn't taste them, we just had to admire them visually. Me at the start of the semester, me at the end of the semester. <laughs> this cake is what we call knowing your audience. A different Michelle Bachman, I presume. Uh, hopefully. Oh, look at that shoe. It's a shoe. Look, we're gonna a really big shoe for you tonight. <laughs> also by Michelle Bachman. Ping Kong, a better indie. I like that. That's fun. That's cute. We wish you a Merry Kong, miss. We wish you a Merry Kong, miss. There was clothing. Okay, so you know yes. that gif of like, Sid Charisse is at the bar and suddenly takes her coat off and she's just like the, you know, uh, the thing that usually tweets like when I'm about to activate in a home mode and it's just like the dress code, like the thing from off. This looks like the outfit that she's wearing and like that gif. There were dolls and doll clothing. Oh, any doll or doll, especially 25 inch hand painted toddler with single strength. So especially a very, 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 very specific category. Yeah. yeah. These kids were the neighbors of the Carousel of Progress family. <laughs> there were collages. Brian Setzer, Setzer, live at the Hollywood Bowl. And yet nothing about his cameo in the Country Bears. <laughs> there were other crafts. I never saw a complete list of categories. I just saw a bunch of cute things in a bunch of different categories. Honey, look, I got the cake taken care of for the wedding now. I'm sure everyone's gonna love to bite into that. Mm. Let's eat lint. I've eaten worse. Oh yeah, hey. Yes. That's super sweet. Maybe but it's got temples in there. Mm. Now I really have to use the Charlotte's Web song in this yes. vlog. Yes, you do. Is that made entirely out of bugle beads? I don't know. Maybe. It looks like it. It looks like it. Which is impressive. There was stuff for all seasons, but leaning heavily on fall and Christmas. When you're too lazy to keep count. And yes, this was where we saw the first Haunted Mansion stuff of the day. And there was a whole category for tablescaping. Setting up a themed table for a themed dinner where both the decor and the menus were designed to fit the themes. And we found Zach's table. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it is a legit D&D tablescape. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, this menu does a better job at emulating Seuss's lyricism than Seussical does. This is party planning, the category. I love it. But also this one literally got some from just Party City, but yeah. only the plates. Everything else That's is... Everything yeah. else is... I mean, my only critique is really Comic Sans, yeah. but yeah. but I, I get that it's, you know, a... A child's birthday party. Yeah. So also, Comic Sans is a dyslexic person's best font because they can actually read it. Mm. I did not know that. Yeah, it was designed specifically for dyslexic folks to be able to actually read more. Yeah. Okay, I, I rescind my issue. I am surprised it took us this long into a craft fair to find the Lucy worship. <laughs> they got a Forever Darling poster. That's a deep cut. Oh, wow. That is a deep cut. The tablescaping stood out among the contest in part because we actually saw the judges' notes for each display, so we could sort of get a sense of why they ranked where they did. I love this. Dessert spoon should be above plate. Rice should not be on the menu twice. No need for two sets of salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> Yeah, but if you have two separate I Love Lucy themed salt and pepper shakers. Where's the second shakers, set? I just see the one. It's the shoes. Oh, it's the shoes. But you're not gonna you're not gonna not use both of those if you have them. And that was the second exhibit we saw about our favorite mansion. I really like using uh, Leota as the centerpiece for the yes, table. I think that's a smart idea. If you live in LA County and want to enter one of these contests, you can. Just go ahead and do it. Let your creativity stretch. And in Expo Hall 5 was America's Kids, featuring similar arts and crafts competitions, but with entries made by kids and teens. I really want to appreciate this kid's <laughs> Like, there's shot composition in that. There is, there is so much going on here that's very clever. There is, that's a little Peter Jackson kid in Megan, I'll tell you. The use of Lego Rex is a very nice touch. Yes. Jesus Christ, spoon or star. This is a very good drawing of the Beatles Ooh, by that is rad. this kid. Nice. Hey, well from, from La Mirada too. Mm -hmm. Outstanding use of theme. I'm proud of you. Oh, my children. All of these kids did a great job. Oh, check this one out. Look at the Bart. <laughs> All of these children and possibly teenagers in some cases are very good artists. Yeah. Oh, I love this, uh, this up sailboat. Oh, that's cute. Oh, cool. In addition to the art competitions, the fair showcased the collections various kids owned. <laughs> Dang it, kid. They got in. They got it early. May, t May 20th. That, that that's, is pretty that's early. A Star Wars fan I'd like to meet right there. Yeah. And you know me. You know how jealous I am of this kid's Perry the Platypus collection. This is giving me terrible flashbacks to science fair. This is, I'm oh, I hated science fair. And kids also got to stretch their creativity by making potions and wands, making a little imaginary magic. Why didn't I get to do this as a child? This is how you grow Imagineers, yeah. right here. This is exactly. You grow Imagineers and production designers this way. And they got to make wands too. Yeah. And today's generation gets all the cool art part. Yeah. First, do we have to make up a story here? Once upon a time, in a faraway land... A friendly queen lived in a peaceful cave. Cat, let's go cave. On the edge of a tiny vill cliff. <laughs> the queen saved the villagers from a fire-breathing toad. <laughs> they all celebrated for two... Winks. Winks. <laughs> and lived happily ever after. Duh. End. This is a new variation on Mad Libs where uh, you don't have to think of any words. Yeah. And on top of the talented work by talented kids, as you can see, there was also delightful decor throughout America's Kids, all tying into the literary theme. Tributes to classic books and the occasional classic movie based on a book abounded throughout the expo hall. Sure, the decor was at about the level of an underfunded school play, but that's appropriate for a school aged arts and crafts fair, and it's still better theming than Six Flags. I like that we've just wandered into the literature pavilion. This is basically <laughs> sponsored by Scholastic here. Yep. Except it's actually sponsored by King Taco. Ah. The great fantasy king. It's the great big beautiful taco. I think it's fitting that Clifford and Jurassic Park are right next to each other. Yeah. 
I mean, I okay, okay. I mean, I guess the Lorax has some humor in it, but I would, I, I would not categorize it as one of Seuss's funnier books. They got an Indiana Jones EU book separating the two Jules Verne movies, and there's our token Doctor Who fandom yes. there. Okay, Lorax is over here in this fantasy realm also, right on top of the Silmarillion, definitely a book of equal reading level. Yes. <laughs> the Lorax and the Silmarillion go, you read them back to back. And of course that classic children's fantasy book. Game of Thrones. And that's not all the interesting decor we saw at the fair. Next time, we'll look at the art the fair provided by exploring the theming.